Well, welcome to another NOS LLC uh, technical tutorial. This time we're going to look at home phone hardline plugs and jacks, specifically what's an RJ11, RJ14, RJ25. First, I'll show you how to identify what you have, then um, how you could add a second line, and even possibly how you could add a third line should you want to do something uh, that uh, drastic. First, a uh, little single line phone stuff. The uh, cable coming from your phone uh, going over to the uh, jack in the wall is often called a silver satin because even though my picture right here is white, it's typically a kind of a sil silver satin color. <clears throat> now most of the time you'll find that the silver satins bring out just two pins of the possible eight uh, pin uh, uh, positions here. Now some of them of course bring them all out but uh, for our purpose I'm going to show you just this one which has just two because uh, for a single line phone that's all you really need are two wires known as a tip and a ring. Now that terminology came from the old uh, phone uh, board uh, plugs because the tip of the thing went to this green wire and the ring of it went to the red wire and then there's another one called the sleeve it went to a black wire which is not used very often and in our instance here you don't need this at all so we're just talking about the tip and ring wires that's called a pair and uh, like I said most of the time these silver satin ones they just they just bring out uh, uh, two not always but uh, most of the time so I've got this little tiny modular plug, which is used in all over the industry now, that's going to plug into a jack. In this instance over here, this is really, really typical. It's no doubt what you have in your house, uh, unless your house is very, very old. It's known as a six position four contact because it has six possible positions, but they've only put four physical contacts into it. All right? This is standard operating procedure pretty much nowadays has been for probably 15 20 years so if your house is uh, you know fairly new 15 20 years old this is no doubt what you'll have is this kind of a thing all right first how to count the pins you count them from the jack um, uh, position that is you look at the jack not the plug to be able to count the pins and here I've given you kind of a open drawing of it. So we start from the left and go to the right. We start from the position. Whether there is a contact in there or not, doesn't matter. Position 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. That's why it's called a 6 position 4 contact because I've only got 4 contacts in 6 possible positions. Right? Now the plug itself, people get lost on this because when you look at it face on, uh, it appears to count backwards. But think about it. you got to rotate this around in order to plug it in. So Right, this is uh, pin one on the right if you're looking at the front end of the plug, but when you actually stick it in there, it's got a match over here. Right, so the red one, the ring is on three. Well, it's on one, two, three, and there it is right there. All right, so continuing on, now you know how to count them. Um, how do you designate them? Well, the RJ11 is in fact this uh, six position. Um, uh, uh, jack, I'll get it in just a minute, the six position jack, but they only bring out or they only wire uh, the, the center two, three and four, so it only supports one telephone line, that is one uh, set of tip and ring, and the tip is on pin four, the ring is on pin three, so there we are right there. Now a lot of people get really concerned about uh, okay do I if I mix the tip and the ring up will it make any difference and if you're really back in the stone age and you still have a dial phone it doesn't make any difference at all if you reverse the tip and ring um, if you have a uh, kind of a newer phone uh, the, the really old touch tone phones they were uh, polarity uh, sensitive so you had to get this right or the touch tone pad wouldn't work but uh, I doubt that anybody has those anymore either. So the new ones, uh, uh, touch tone, uh, otherwise known as dual tone multi-frequency DTMF, um, they don't care. So once again, most of the time, it doesn't matter if you mix up the tip, tip and ring. But you do have to get the pins correct, right? So, and it's nice to keep the color code straight anyway. 
Uh, if you're running an RJ14, you can support two telephone lines. And once again, look at the pin numbering here, pin 4 and 3, just like we had up here for line 1. But now we have to designate it. Tip 1 is pin 4, ring 1 is pin 3. And to bring the second phone line in, that is down here, uh, we have to have another tip and ring. So the tip for line number 2 would be on pin 2, and the ring for line number 2 would be on pin 5. And that's what I'm showing you down here. So this RJ11, single phone line, RJ14, two phone lines. And then finally, if you got this, and I'd be surprised if you ever see this in a residential um, location, also, although certainly if you're a high dollar business dude and you're running, you know, multiple lines, you, you need something like this. Uh, RJ25 supports three phone lines, and once again, you can see line one still on four and three, line two still on two and five, but we wire up uh, um, pin one and six for the third phone line here, so this would be RJ25 all of which are on this uh, six position but this would be a six position right here with four contacts all right, I'm showing six but it would have four contacts six position four contacts this also be a six position four contact but as soon as you go to this you're gonna have to have a six position six contact right so this you only need two contacts, this you need four contacts, and this one you need six contacts. So I've never seen one of these myself because uh, I'm not a high dollar businessman and I never had three phone lines in my house. But I did have this for a long, long time. So how do you go about doing this? What's the normal? <clears throat> well, in my house, this is the normal. I actually had two phone lines coming in here. Now I... I I got rid of one of them, so I only have one. But I had two phone lines coming in here uh, from the telephone company. This is the outside of my house, what's known as the demark or demarcation point between the phone company and my house wiring. So I pick up phone line number one, and I'd use uh, this blue and white wire. And I pick up phone line number two from the phone company, and I use this orange wire. And the reason I could do that in my house is because I am running internally in the house a cable that's known as a quad or four pair. Uh, and there's uh, a color code for this, blue, orange, and then green and brown. Well, I cut off the green and the brown, didn't need them because I just had two phone lines coming in here. So so I uh, have that uh, the phone uh, signal, the dial tone, if you will, coming in on the blue for line one and the orange for line two. That then goes internally inside my house over to a demarcation panel. And at that demarcation panel, I've got all these punch down uh, connections here. This uh, blue wire right here for line number one actually comes over here and appears on the punch downs, every punch down right here. And the orange one for line two comes in and appears on every punch down right here. And you can see it tip, tip and ring of line one, tip and ring of line two. And if I brought in a third line, it would appear on every one of these. That is up here, every one of the green ones. And if I had a fourth line, it would appear on the brown one, every one of the brown ones on the punch down panel right here. So from my panel then, um, when I had the house built, I had them put phone jacks in, of course, every room. And to get from the panel to the phone jacks, they run also a quad cable. So all these blue cables right here go to the various rooms in my house. And then I can determine where I want these lines to go. And I do that by punching down the wire in here, right, to, to pick up the phone line that's all across this punch down, or the second phone all across the punch down. And right here you can see it. On the back of the panel is this, this wiring right here coming to the back of the panel. On the front of the panel, on the quad that goes to, let's say, the living room, I punch down the blue and white, which will carry phone line one over to the living room, all right? And that's all I really need, although typically we'd punch them all down. But uh, because the telephone company uh, gave me line one here and I chose to pick it up in the blue, and the blue on this quad goes to the, effectively the back of this panel, across the panel, then all I have to do is uh, just make sure that the blue-white is over here and it's attached to the back of this uh, 6P4C right here. And voila, I have wired this RJ11. 
Now, if you have a really old house, and I mean really old, like at least 15, 20, or even more, it's very possible you have this older kind of wiring, and it was just uh, two pairs uh, grouped this way, a uh, green and a red, right? green and a red. The green is the tip, and the red is the ring. So that would be line one, and if you had a second line, it would come in on the uh, black and yellow, right? So you could have two phone lines when you have this old wire, but that's all. You couldn't go any further than that. And very often it was, you know, screwed down. That is, your wire coming in here would be the uh, green and red, and you'd attach your red wire to this one, and you'd attach your green wire to this one. And on the other side of this, if you rotate it around, you'd see it. It looks like this, right? So. If you got a really old house, you only got two pairs. If you got a newer house, you'll probably have quad, which gives you four pairs, a lot more flexibility. And if you're interested in any of that, I have another video up here on how I wired my house for uh, Ethernet. Actually, it's no longer Ethernet. It's 10 base T, uh, 10 uh, megabits of baseband on twisted pair, and I use phone wire for it. In which everybody says you can't do that well I did it so and the reason I did it is because I have a phone uh, access panel like this that I can really mess around with and kind of got off on a tangent there I do that a lot okay so bringing in a second phone line that is the one that c uh, comes in over here on the orange it appears every place on the orange patch panel therefore it's right here and I can bring this quad over to the living room and I bring those two wires out this time it's the orange uh, uh, white orange and orange white and I bring them up on uh, pins pin position number two and five right so that would give me my second phone line. But, once again, this presents a bit of a problem because the silver satin typically is wired just to pick up uh, the center, these two, three and four, for line one. So how do you do that? Uh, how do you get this second phone line active at the telephone itself? We may wire it here, but somehow you got to get it from here and here to the second phone uh, either the second physical phone or the second line on a dual line phone because you can get those they're quite a, readily available all right there's two ways to get around this problem that you've got uh, line one on the center three and four and you've got line two on the outside but you only got a single line phone that is right your silver satin only picks up three and four how do you do this? Well, there's a couple ways to get around it. The cheapest way is just go buy one of these because this has a, a plug on it that plugs into the standard, right? The standard one that has been wired for two phone lines. So it picks up all four of those pins, picks up line one on the center and line two on the outside right here, and it distributes them over like this. The three and four gets put over here to three and four. So you can plug phone number one into that and pick up telephone line number one but the outside two right here which is line two those two pins right there are mapped over here to three and four so I can have a second phone plug it in and it will pick up the second phone line on the center right so I have to have two phones though to do that using standard two uh, two wire or single pair uh, phones now, if you don't want to do that, and believe me, this is the simplest way to do it, if you have two phone lines coming in, and is to have two telephones, right? Or, or, in the room you only want line number two, you'd go in the back of the jack and do effectively the same thing. In my case, I just reverse the orange uh, pair with the blue pair. So the orange pair, which is line number two, will then appear on the center, right here kind of like what this does only now this is a bit more permanent and you have to open the jack and mess around with the wires you can do the same thing on the old type by swapping the green red with the yellow uh, yellow black you do it where the wire comes in where you screw these down so the green wire that normally would go here you stick it over and and the red wire normally here you stick it over on the um, black and yellow All right and then the black and yellow you stick it over here so effectively you reversed it so line one would appear on the outside and line uh, two would appear on the inside right here 
I've done that too, but the simplest way is this. But that means you have to have two phones. Or, right, you have to buy uh, a two line phone. That's a better solution. You get a phone that has button one for line one and button two for line two, and you get a silver satin that has uh, two pairs in it, which is readily available. And that allows the phone to pick up either the center or the outside. Uh, pins on the wire uh, on the RJ14 alright so that way you can you don't have to do anything other than make sure you're wired RJ14 line 1 center line 2 on the outside and if you go to go to all this trouble to mess around I would suggest that you go get yourself some tools at the local uh, hardware store Lowe's sells these things I know I, I've looked at them many times this is the punch down tool because when you're punching down on these things right here and lots of people just use a flat blade screwdriver and push it in there but that's kind of messy you know? it's possible I've had to do that on occasion but uh, having the correct tool really helps so this is a punch down tool it punches it into the slot and cuts off the excess um, this is a tone tracer when you start getting into doing lots of messing around with your uh, uh, home phone wiring it's really helpful to have something like this because you can go out to the demarcation point uh, pull off the wires attach this tone tracer and then go in the house and find it with this little probe right here so you can find the wires real easy you don't have to walk back and forth 15,000 times or have walkie talkies so that you can talk to somebody inside the house it's very helpful and then trying to actually get inside the uh, jack to test on the pins very difficult to get your little voltmeter probes and stuff in there get yourself one of these called a banjo breakout and you plug that into the jack and it brings out the pins on these little pieces of metal right here so they're real easy to get to so if you do a lot of stuff do this get those things so adding a third line th this really is a problem because if you have the old uh, wiring uh, red green black yellow uh, you can't because you only got four wires that is two phone line capability uh, with this older wiring stuff so you'd have to pull in a new uh, new wire to do it right and even if you had it you'd still have to uh, replace the um, six pin four contacts with a six pin six contact to get the extra uh, p uh, contacts out here for the line number three now I know they make them I've just never seen one myself um, but once again you'd have to wire up the the back of this thing correctly so line one's the center line two's outside and line three is completely outside in order to be a standard RJ25 but that once again brings you back up to okay you're gonna have to have a cable that picks up that is a silver satin that picks up uh, all six pins and you have to have a phone that has three buttons on it line one line two line three is that possible of course it is but uh, not being a residential phone installer just a guy that messes around with all kinds of stuff I've never seen one of those typically if you're getting up that big uh, you're gonna go to even a different kind of a solution beyond what I want to show you here so uh, how do you know what you have well I'll tell you this if the jack has only four metal pins that is a it's a six uh, position four contact you're not an RJ25 there's no way it can be an RJ25 because you can only pick up two phone lines um, if you only have four contacts so if there's DC voltage typically around oh, 25 to 50 volts or so and you measure it between pins three and four it's going to be wired for a RJ11 that is a single line if you have a voltage on 3 and 4 and on 2 and 5 it means that you're wired RJ14 that is for two phone lines right now a small cautionary note um, the 48 volts or so in American systems uh, even the 48 volts is not enough because it's DC to really give you any kind of um, a danger but if you're kind of hanging under the wires and somebody happens to call your house that can give you a real jolt because it's a an alternating current um, and while it won't kill you falling off the ladder when you jump may so be careful when you're messing with these things it's not like working with the alternating current coming out of your 
a household outlet for making your toaster run, but it can make you jump around, so that could be dangerous. All right, so the best way to avoid this issue altogether is ditch the hardware phones and go to cellular. You know, and you say, well, Ma Bell may lose some of these installers if she does that. Well, that's okay. They can, you know, retrain to put in the infrastructure to handle uh, wireless systems, cellular systems. I know lots of people have done that. You know, you know, move into the modern age. So thanks for watching. I hope this is uh, explanatory because it's really not that difficult once you kind of you know examine this and study it for a little bit. But I suppose you could say that about a lot of things. So perhaps I'll uh, talk to you again if you decide to watch some more of our videos. And we have lots of them for you uh, related to this kind of subject, telecommunications, and many other subjects too. Yeah. So, talk to you later.